everybody, Adam here with Hometown Acres. Welcome back. Something about this time of the year, cold out, muddy, and it gets dark at five o'clock, that just makes me wanna stay inside the wood shop here and get some projects done, and today is no exception. Something I've been wanting to do for the last year is tear out our old workbench and finish the wall back behind it to make it match the rest of the shop. And then I wanna put in a new and improved workbench. It's gonna be pretty exciting. Any of you guys that have been with us for a little while might remember last winter, we milled all of the lumber uh, on the sawmill here, ran it through the planer, joiner, table saw, and the router, just like we did with this new lumber that we're gonna use behind the workbench. And I love how this turned out. This side of the shop, I consider pretty much done other than maybe a little bit more organization in the cabinets up there. But the rest of the shop still needs that. And I'm gonna do it in two different sections. I'm gonna do the workbench first. That way all of these tools and everything I can pull out, put the wall up, put the workbench back, organize that. And then once that's all put back together, then I can tear everything off of this wall and do that wall in a, a part two. Uh, just kind of smaller bites instead of having everything off the wall, taking up floor space in here, just makes it a little bit more manageable. One thing I learned when we did this half of the shop was the router, when I go to do that lumber and, and create those shiplap joints, it creates a ton of mess. So what I did was I went to Harbor Freight, got a couple of tarps and some bicycle hooks and created a little uh, routering booth. And I think it did a pretty good job at keeping the mess contained to just in here. Because when we did this last time, I had probably three inches of wood chips on the floor and I had stuff shooting in underneath all the equipment and everything. And this way it kind of keeps everything tucked in to this area. And uh, especially if you look over here back behind, I mean, it pretty much, we got a line right there of where it stopped. So I don't have to pull all of this out and sweep underneath there. Let's go ahead and get these tarps down, get this mess cleaned up, and then we can tear out the old workbench and start putting walls up. Yep, I'd say overall the router booth did a pretty good job of containing the mess. Like I said, I don't have any wood chips in underneath all of this junk on the wall here. Well, I suppose it's gotta get worse before it gets better. Let's get started. All right, so now we got the old workbench off and I wanna rework this insulation that we put back here a little bit. Main reason being when I first did this, I really didn't know what I was doing. Not that I know what I'm doing now, but since then our buddy Kyle over at Spicer Designs did a very good detailed video on the best way to seal up a pole building using this uh, foam board. And I kind of want to take a couple pages out of his book. So when we first did this, I tried to cut those as perfectly tight as I could, but even so there's still just a little bit of a gap there. If you see, and any warm air that can get back there, behind that foam board is going to create condensation. And if you look up here, you can actually see, can you see those little water droplets? So that's what you wanna prevent. You wanna make sure that no air can get back behind this pink foam board. Otherwise you're gonna get water condensating on the metal, which over time, you know, 15, 20, 30 years is going to rot out your studs on the walls. So let me show you a couple of the tricks that we picked up from Kyle's channel. First thing we're gonna do is take out these ones that we cut really tight and actually cut them about a quarter of an inch too small. And then what we'll do is we'll leave a gap on the bottom and on the top purposely, and that gap will come back in and seal with spray foam. Just to further prove my point, that piece that we just took off, you can see all the water that was condensating on here. And you can see where that water is starting to collect on those studs. Again, over time, that's gonna rot that out. I'm glad we're taking care of it and fixing it now. 
I also want to mention when I first cut these foam boards, I didn't have a table saw. So I tried everything from a utility knife to a sawzall to a jigsaw to a circular saw. And by far the best way to cut this foam board and get nice, straight, clean cuts is the table saw. So now that we've shaved this down a little bit, you can see we've got a little bit of play there. It makes it a lot easier to get it in here instead of trying to fit it tight in there and jam it in. So now what we'll do is we'll get a screw and use a screw as a spacer on the top and bottom, which will also hold it tight to the wall. And then we'll get our spray foam out and put a bead on the top and bottom, which is going to seal it up much better than trying to cut it perfectly to fit in there. All right, so we got our first panel done and you can see the purpose of those screws is to hold a space on the bottom and the top and it also keeps it tight into the purlins there so it's not wanting to bow out on you. Now this is another recommendation from Kyle and that is one of these spray foam guns and I've used this in the past and I've recommended it as well. It is so much better for this type of work than the typical straw tube cans that you buy from the box store. You have so much more control, you get so much more distance out of the foam and you're able to start and stop without having it ooze out of the straw at the end of the, the tubes that you buy from the store. These have their own dedicated tubes. They're about twice the size and you just get so much more mileage out of it and you waste a lot less material. But let me show you just how much better control you have if I start up here. I highly doubt you're going to get this much control out of those straw tube cans. And just like that, when you're done, nothing is oozing out of the end. You can also adjust this. So if you're not doing fine control work like this and you're filling a big gap, like we'll do down here, You'll see I can crank it all the way open and really put down quite a bit of foam. So now this section here, I'll show you how you can control it and dial it up here for a bigger area. Now this wall is sealed off much better than it was before. Obviously not the neatest, tidiest work because I was reusing material instead of starting with brand new. It would have been nice to just have one full sheet instead of scabbing together, you know, some scrap pieces. But that's the nice thing about the spray foam is you can utilize more of the pink foam board by utilizing extra scrap pieces and filling that seam and still having an airtight seal with the spray foam. And even on ends like this where the uh, sheet wasn't quite long enough, an extra three or four inches, just uh, go to town with the uh, spray foam gun. And again, you know, you can get cracks nice and tight and neat like this, or you can open up full tilt and fill in big voids like that, or like this big space right there. All we have left to do now is to let this dry and then we'll come back and start hanging the walls. Um, if you were going to be hanging the wall directly on these boards here, you'd have to come in and cut this flush. But what we're gonna do is actually add some nailers, build this wall out a little bit, and then add our shiplap siding on those. So we can actually leave this the way it is because we're gonna build it out another two by four width.
So yeah guys, not too shabby for two days worth of work. One day spent getting all the lumber ready to hang and then one day tearing out the old workbench, doing some spray foaming and then getting the wall hung and we had enough left over to do above the garage door so that's done too now. You might be wondering why if I'm already all set up I don't just do the whole garage all at once and the reason is if you look behind me, I don't have enough room to tear apart both walls and still have room to work. I've got to get all of this stuff put back into the new workbench before I can start thinking about tearing apart this wall and finishing this side of the garage. But yeah guys, I think we're all set up and ready to start construction on the new workbench. I've got some pretty cool ideas I think you're gonna to wanna to stick around for and maybe if we're lucky we can get the king of garage organization ideas over here, neighbor Doug, One Eye Customs, and offer up a good idea or two. You'll have to stick around in the next video to see that. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, give me a big thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.